Hello folks, Sunday Snippets. I may be a couple of minutes early, which makes a change for me. Um, today I want to go through something that is going to help you a lot. Um, and you may have seen me announcing this. I'm going to be talking about the golden age of the cinema. Because that has a lot of lessons in it if you're marketing something. And if this is the first time on one of these sessions, uh, I'm not here to pitch anything. I'm not going to try and sell you anything. I'm not going to give you any links free or paid or whatever they are. Uh, I'm just here to straight talk to you. Why should you listen to me? Because I make well over $40,000 a month, every month. And I've been marketing online since 1998. And my main objective is to help you avoid all the pitfalls and all the hype and nonsense that's talked and give you some real truth. Uh, it's not intended to put you off, but if it does put you off, it'll save you losing money because a lot of people get sucked into things. They're told how easy it is. Uh, and if it was easy, everybody online would be making a fortune. And the, the reality is that a few people are making a fortune, but most of them are uh, losing money and very few of them are breaking even. And there are just um, a, a tiny minority that are making a regular strong income. And when I talk about strong income, I suppose I'm talking about $5,000 a month and upwards. Very few people are doing that. And the people that you hear about that are making the big money, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year or some, sometimes millions of dollars, they're like very, very small percentage. So what I found is that most people are interested in, if you ask them, I, and I've surveyed uh, my list, I've done surveys on various occasions and I've shared surveys with other people that I know that have got uh, a large lists and are making money. And most people come back and they say that they could retire on $5,000 a month quite comfortably, but they'd really like to make $10,000 a month. Now we do get a few people that say, okay, I'm only interested in making $200 because I, I want to cover my car payment. They're a minority. We also get people that say, oh, I want to make a million dollars. And that, that's fine. But you've got to be realistic. You're not going to make a million dollars uh, in a few weeks. It takes time. It takes time to build a business. And it takes time to understand what you're doing. Most of the people out there that say they're making money uh, are not making money. They're just saying that because they're desperate to get people to join them. And of the ones that say they are making money, most of them are what I call one-hit wonders. They've struck it lucky a little bit and they've found that they've got an income coming in and they're making money, but they don't really understand how they've done it. And sooner or later, that income goes poof and they can't get back. And you, you'll see these people, they'll come and they'll go. And they'll be talking about how much money they've made and they'll sometimes show you PayPal accounts. Sometimes they're genuine, sometimes they're falsified. Or they'll show you bank accounts or income statements from the company or whatever. And in some cases, they're true. But as I say, that income all of a sudden goes poof. What happened to it? And how do I get it back and what do I do? They don't know. So... It pays you to listen to somebody that's got no axe to grind. It doesn't matter to me whether you take my advice or not. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to help you do the right thing and understand things the right way. So what has the golden age of the cinema got to do with making sales online? You can probably see that I'm... Uh, no, no youngster. So I can actually remember things, not just before the internet, but I can remember things before television. And uh, that is when the golden age of the cinema was around in the 1940s, 1950s. Uh, towns had 
small towns had two, three, four uh, cinemas and they all showed different movies every week and the format tended to be uh, there'd be the main feature movie which would last maybe an hour and a half something like that there'd be um, a, a supporting cast movie a B movie or um, whatever they, they call it and that would maybe last an hour and then there'd be half an hour that would be filled up with uh, maybe a 10 minute intermission where they sold uh, chocolate and ice cream and cold drinks and uh, there'd be newsreel because people didn't have televisions and so to get newsreels on the on the cinema screen was a good good thing and uh, there'd also be some local advertising show so the whole program lasted maybe three hours and that would run continuously usually from uh, sometime around midday uh, or one o'clock perhaps around one o'clock in the afternoon till four o'clock and then what they called the second house would start at four and go until seven and then the the final sort of late night one would go from seven till ten at night and you could get in at any time you'd pay any time and you'd usually try and get in before the start of the main feature because that's what you really wanted to see and to get your money's worth sometimes you'd come in in the middle of the the B movie and you'd start watching it and you'd come in halfway through and and uh, and at the end of everything you'd start watching that movie so that you could see what the beginning of it was about it was uh, it was just one of those things that happened it was it was what used to go on in the late 1940s and early 1950s well all through the 1950s probably so um, what has that got to do with things well there were as I say a few cinemas and they were competing for business the same way that you're competing for business and they were all selling similar products the same way that you're probably selling similar products and they had advertising then they'd have uh, pictures of stills outside the cinema showing uh, some of the shots from the film and the, uh, the headline actors and they, they try and get you in to the cinema one time because if they got you in one time then it was up to them to make that experience enjoyable so that you'd come back and they'd be selling other things they'd be selling magazines of the film stars of the time with backgrounds and profiles and these were all put out by Hollywood and this became something that people that went to the cinema they used to collect these magazines and they would also be making money from the advertising that they were showing and what they used to do also in this sort of 30 minute period was they'd show a serial um, Batman or Captain Marvel or Dick Tracy and it would only last for five or maybe ten minutes each time you came to the cinema each week that there'd be a new part of this serial and it would build up and it would have this exciting things going on and it would get to the end and it would cut off just when you weren't sure what was going to happen uh, the saw was going to chop the hero in half or the train was going to run off the track or whatever it may be but it left you in that sort of cliffhanging situation where you wanted to know what happened next time and this was how they tried to get you back into the cinema they wanted you to come back in next week and this was just an extra incentive because you wanted to know what was going on in this serial and you got into this week after week after week and this is something that you've got to learn to do in your business because you'll hear the money's in the list and that's true email marketing is probably well not probably it definitely is from all the figures that you'll find online and from personal experience the best return on investment you will get and accounts for more online sales than any other method 
So, yeah, building a list is important. But the list is only as good as the emails that get opened. And I'll give you a very good example of that. I get a lot of people that come to me for help. They get stuck. They get. Uh, but this was an extreme example because it was a guy um, who um, had a good profession and made a lot of money. But he wanted more time. And if you remember hot buttons that I talked about a, a, a week ago or two weeks ago or whenever, um, then um, I uh, I apologise for that. I'm just looking for this to come up on my... Yeah... I just wanted to make sure we're there and check any comments. I'll check the comments in a moment. If you've got any questions, by all means ask them. But anyway, this guy came to me because he bought into one of these, um, we do it all for you, we make the sales, we get on the phone and we do all this sort of stuff. All you've got to do is buy the license for these products and, uh, and you're going to be rich. Uh, okay, well the guy was already rich, but he wanted time. That was his hot button. It wasn't the cash, the car, the house. He got all that. But he wanted time. And so he bought in. And I think he bought in at the top level of this opportunity, which was about $45,000. And they said, all you've got to do now is chuck uh, prospects into the top of the funnel. And out of the bottom are going to come pouring dollars. And then you'll be able to cut down on the amount of time you're spending in your job and get that free time you want uh, and this will replace your income and if you've been involved in one of these opportunities you know that it doesn't always work that way in fact it seldom does uh, there are a few people that do really really well out of it but these are people that would probably do well anyway and it helps them get more people in but the people that are getting in that would fail in any opportunity tend to fail anyway so the success rates are no better in these done for you, we'll do all the selling for you opportunities than they are in do it all yourself opportunities. This, the failure rates are still around about 95%. But the people that are making money are making a lot more because they're getting a lot more people in, a lot more people failing, but that cash is going through the system and people are making, people at the top are making millions of dollars. So anyway, this guy came to me, he bought in uh, at 40, 45 down, I can't remember the exact figure. It's an opportunity that's still around today. Um, and he then went out and bought $15,000 worth of solo ads. And um, hi Richard, something come up there. Nice to, nice to see people here and giving us a like and or a love and all this sharing sharing this with other people anyway he had built uh, a list on his autoresponder of about six or seven thousand people I think and he'd not made a sale not one sale and he spent altogether, what, 60 grand, something like that. So he came to me and he did what most people do, actually. He said, I've got a friend who, he didn't want to say, you know, I, I'm the mug. But eventually that came out. Um, and we had a look at it and um, his emails weren't getting open. His open rate was so low that it was virtually nil so it's no good having that list it's no good having a list of six thousand ten thousand i know people that have got a list of just a few thousand that make ten dollars per subscriber per month on their list most people will quote you oh, if you build a list of ten thousand people you make a dollar per subscriber per month you'll have a ten thousand dollar income okay that is if you've got people on your list who are interested in what you're saying, who are opening your emails and who uh, have the cash to take up the offers 
that solve their problems. So this guy spent all this money and he, he's got nothing back out of it. Eventually we got him on track. This program wasn't suited to him uh, and we, we got him involved in something else and he achieved what, 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 he, what he was looking for. It was a better fit for him. Because there is no one size fits all. But the lessons really I, I want to tell you here is the first thing you've got to do when you're building a list is get that initial email opened. So how do you do that? Well, what you do is whatever you're giving away, whatever you're in, in using to induce them to give you their email address, to give them permission, to, to, for, for them to give you the permission to, to contact them, you deliver it through that first email and you make that clear you make it clear on the landing page the opt-in form you make it clear on any page that they get to after that uh, you say okay we've got this all sorted for you it's going to be emailed to you it is emailed to you it's been in. you need to check your email to get it okay that way most of the people that opt in will open the email because they wanted what they originally opted in for. Once you've got them opted in, and this is like the, the advertising outside the cinema, once you've got them into that first um, once you've got them into that first movie, you want to keep them there. You want to keep them coming back. And this is where the content of your emails is important. Because that first email, you've not only got to deliver what you said you were going to deliver, but you've also got to leave the bait for the next email. You've got to leave that cliffhanger like the serial in the, in the cinemas in the, in the golden age there. You've got to have something that they want to come back for. And you've got to put that into the email. You've got to say in the next email, I'm going to be helping you with this or sending you this or delivering this or whatever it is you need to get that into your email you need to have them wanting to open that email you want to tell them who you are so that they know when they see that name come up in their inbox oh that's the guy that sent me this and he said he was going to send me that so they get used to seeing your name and that way they open your email People open emails from people they recognize. If you get a, an email from your mother, your sister, your brother, your best friend, you open it because you know the person, not because the subject says, uh, I'm going on holiday next week, do you want to come? It's because it's from Fred who you know, or you, whatever. So you get them to know who you are and why you can help them and how you're going to help them and why they should open that next email. And that has got to be a continuous process. There's got to be something there so that they know when they see your email, they're going to get something of value from you. And if you do that, then you'll create this process of having the emails open. So that's important. It's no good having a list if that list isn't opening your emails. Once they're opening your emails, then you can use your content. And we can go into this more on another occasion. We don't spend a lot of time on these Sunday, Sunday sessions, these snippets of putting your links in and getting them to click on your links and see what you're offering. And, and you can do this even with the free stuff. Put a link in there. So, so that's right. Think about the businesses around you and how they engender that customer respect and retention and the, the, the wanting to come back as a regular because you've got to build your business on that same basis and if you want to make sales online if you want to be truly independent and not dependent then you've got to learn to master the art of getting people onto your list opening your emails and clicking your links if you can master those arts, you will make money. And that's what I wanted to cover today. So hopefully that struck a chord with you and it'll help you. It'll help you when you're thinking, oh, 
also I want to tell you this people say oh how many I don't want to put people off by sending too many emails top marketers will send at least one email a day there are very few of them that will send less than one email a day and if they do they send in three or four a week probably anyway and when they've got an event coming up or something you'll get four five six seven in a single day reminding you about this event or this special thing if your email content is of value to the subscriber they won't get fed up with getting emails from you but if it's of no value and all you're doing is just pushing 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 then yeah they'll unsubscribe or they'll say oh that, I'm not opening it just so it is important don't worry that you're sending too many emails just make the emails that you send have good content value make them informative make them uh, interesting and if you want to go through some of the things we've covered in previous sessions I'll be adding a link into uh, the comments section here or into the top of it I think probably um, for my YouTube channel and you'll find the previous Sunday snippet sessions. If you've enjoyed this, please like it, share it with other people and um, I'll see you next Sunday, same time. God bless you all.